First Kings chapter 11, verse 26. I'm looking at Jeroboam. And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephanite of Zerda, Solomon's servant. So he worked with Solomon, whose mother's name was Zora. And I said last night, Lord willing, that as we see the kings now, we're going to see one of the information is going to be their mother's name. A widow woman, even he lifted up his hand against the king. And this was the cause that he lifted up his hand against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches of the city of David his father. And when Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor, Solomon seeing the young man that he was industrious, that's the only time that word shows up, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. That's one of the tribes of Israel, which would have been split into Ephraim and Manasseh. But so, and he was an Ephraimite, so uh, before any conflict happens, Jeroboam, you're over the house of Joseph. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ahijah, the Shilonite, found him in the way. And he clad, that's the first time that word shows up, himself with a new garment. Now the only tricky part of this part is who's wearing the garment? Ahijah or Jeroboam? And they too were alone in the field. So, they're in the middle of the fields of type of the world in the Bible. There's only these two men. And Hijah caught the new garment that was on him. And rent it in 12 pieces. So someone's garment, Hijah grabs all it, rip, 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 12 pieces. Now it was Jared Bones, I bet you he got mad. If it was a Hijah's, Jeroboam was probably looking at him like, what a waste. And he said to Jeroboam, take the ten pieces. Here, out of twelve, here's ten. For thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. The God of Israel. Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon. Can you see now why Solomon got upset at Jeroboam? God comes down and he says, listen, I sent this adversary, I sent this adversary, you're number three. But your adversariness <laughs> is not in his time, but in the time of his son, I'm going to split this kingdom into two. There's going to be a north and there's going to be a south. And there will be forever civil wars. And this nation will not ever be sold back up. It will never be a unity again. Until Jesus Christ comes back and sits on the throne of David. And we saw even still in the life of David. In the beginning of Solomon. There was that north and south break. When David was made king in Jerusalem. It's always been there. And now because of Solomon's sins. He's going to make the split. He's going to split it in twelve and two and ten. And when Christ dies, he splits that veil into two. Take thee ten pieces. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to thee. That's north. That would be called what north is called Israel. Ten tribes. Anyone but Judah and Benjamin and some of Simeon. Benjamin is swallowed up in Judah. Jerusalem, according to the book of Joshua, is Benjamin's territory. Simeon is found. And they're so vast in Judah, because two and a half tribes, half tribe of Manasseh and the other two, they didn't come into the land. But he, God shall have, I mean he, Solomon's son, he shall have one tribe, for the servant of David's sake. That would be Judah. Which also swallows up part of Simeon and Benjamin. The city which I have chosen of all the tribes of Israel. So Jerusalem is still going to be central to God. When this nation splits. 
with the sun with I mean, the next few chapters. Never does Jeroboam and Israel north, they never have a king that got right. Jeroboam's going to set up even worse kingdom of two golden calves. And just go on and on and on. And they will go into captivity second. Now the half tribe of Manasseh and the other two tribes that are on the other side of the Jordan, the wrong side, they will go into captivity first. Israel north will go into captivity second, and Judah will go into captivity third. It's going to be a big mess because of Solomon. Because that, verse 33, they have forsaken me. In case you didn't read chapter 11, a recap. And have worshipped asterisk. That's Mary. That's Easter. That was last night. The goddess of the Zidonians. Chemish, the god of the Moabites. Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon. And have not walked in my ways. Though the temple is there. To do that which is right in my eyes, God. And to keep my statutes, my judgments, as did David, his father. Solomon has done wrong. Solomon has left the ways of God. Solomon is going to reap the nation by splitting it. You want to be that way? I'll split. How be it? I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand. But I will make him prince all the days of his life for David, my servant. Look how God just said, I dropped the king. You're just a prince. I, albeit I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, Solomon, but I will make him prince all the days of his life for David my service. In the eyes of God, Solomon, you're no more king. You are not an ambassador of my nation, of my temple. That's missed a lot when you read the Bible. Those are the words. My servant David say. Whom I chose, who I chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes. And you'll say, well, David, that's not what God brought up here, did he? We're dealing with two hearts. One heart that loved the Lord God. Yeah, adultery and murder. Why don't you talk about your pride? Why don't you talk about your sins? David sinned, but his heart was toward God. And God said, hey, I love you, David. You love me. Now, I'm going to give you some tragedy in your family, in your life. David paid for his sins. He reaped what he sold. All right? As far as the count of David, any man that, that, the, that the prison system and the justice system say, you go to jail for X amount of years and you truly repent with God and got right with God, you paid the penalty as David did. Now you still hold that name. Matthew 1 says David who, with Bathsheba who had been the husband of Uriah. Now that, that is still your title. But if you've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, it's cleansed. If you walk before Jesus Christ, you might have a greater testimony than the person at hand. The person at hand is, is Solomon. He's got wisdom from God. But he sinned. David sinned. Yeah, but David repented and got right. Solomon has not repented. Solomon has not got right. That's exactly what not David did. David repented and got right with his heart. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Solomon, his heart is fleshy. That's right. David saw a woman washing herself. We have no idea if that woman was naked or not. He liked her. He said, well, go get her. Fine. He married her, he took care of her, he had a son with her, that's Solomon. Solomon, 1,000 times, I like her, I like her, I, li I, I can't do it a thousand times. Builds the temple. Turns his heart away from God by serving all these other gods. David never ever served another god. Solomon is on the other side of the coin. David remained king until he was really just old and fragile and we had to put another king in the office 
because if his son was going to assert the authority over the kingdom, we have to put Solomon in. But he was king really unto his death. Solomon has lost the title. And as yes, adultery and murder are heinous crimes in the Old Testament, but David never lost the crown. Realize David will be prince when Jesus Christ is king in Israel. Solomon? What promises do we have of Solomon? We got his books in the Bible. And unto his son will I give one tribe that would be Rehoboam. Which again, it's Judah and Benjamin. Unity. Unity up north of ten tribes and unity of the southern tribes. Judah called. Prescribed. Judah ends up with the Sodomite tribe. Benjamin, if you remember Judges. They come knocking on the door just like the lot out. Let us have, let us see that man so we can know him. Oh, we can't have him and we'll abuse his wife all night. Don't forget about that, about the Benjaminites. And the Benjaminites protected the Solomonites. And it shall be, uh, wait a minute, and I will take thee, all right, verse 36, and unto his son will I give one tribe, that David my servant may have a light all the way before me in Jerusalem. That tribe that God says is going to remain, that city that's going to remain is Judah, and that will become Jesus Christ. The line of Judah. The promise of David. You will forever to have a man on the throne, David. And we read in Jeremiah a couple of nights ago, Lord willing, that, oh, earth, 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 right, this man childed. I have had it with the kingdom. That's it. Not only am I going to split the kingdom, I'm getting rid of the king. I'm getting rid of the castle. I'm getting rid of the temple. I am destroying it all. I am tired of it. You're not going to have the king. When the Messiah comes, there'll be no king and, and the temple will be going in 70 AD. Well, how can I do that promise to David? Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a child. Impossible. But right now, let's deal with Solomon. The state of the kingdom right now is, I'm turning the nation into two. I'm turning the nation into two. And still the promise of Judah lies with Jesus Christ. The mind that's on God right now, Solomon, you sin, but i got to keep Judah because Jesus Christ is coming out of that tribe. I've got to preserve Judah. If I wasn't going to provide the Messiah, if I had not promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and David, I would have wiped you guys all off the map. You better thank God for his word. His word says, if I were to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, I am not going to hell. He'll never leave me or forsake me. By the word of God that he made the oath that he promised me, he's holding to his word. And I made God angry. After I was saved. Never mind before I was saved. That's all under the blood. To put my name there. And I will take thee. And thou shalt reign. That this would be uh, Jeroboam. I will take thee. And thou shalt reign according to all thy soul desires. Oh boy. His soul is going to desire his gods and just filth. And shall be a king over Israel. Ahab and Jezebel are going to come out of Jeroboam. Ahaz or Ahab. I forget which one is married to. One is two. Golden calf. Aaron made one calf. Jeroboam's going to make two. And it shall be if that's conditional and he won't throw Calvin out the window because that if there. God had not predetermined Jeroboam to do what he's done. He said if Thou will hearken unto all that I command thee. Relax, he won't. And will walk in my ways. Completely will not. And do that which is right in my sight. He won't. To keep my statutes, yeah, right. And my commands, surely not. Look at this, as David my servant did. Now look at the example God gave. You won't look at anybody in the past that you can say, Hey, they obeyed what I told them to do. David. David is God's example. You may say, well, 
How come you keep going the same place and preaching the gospel week after week after week after week? Because I'm telling them what God wants. I am telling them what the Word of God is. Now, what they do with it, that's between them and God. I throw an if. If you are to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. If you want to trust religion, you're not saved. You want to trust science, you ain't saved. I am forewarning you. This prophet, Ahijah, is forewarning Jeroboam. This is what God's going to do to you. But if you do good, there'll be good that come from it. But since that's an if, if you don't, every man in the world is going to get a warning by God. And we're not predestined by anything to do what God wants us to do. It is in our own heart. David is the example. That I will be with thee. And build thee a sure house. Now look at that sure mercy of David. That won't happen. That will not happen in Israel at all. Every king in Israel, I can tell you already, are not going to obey God. They're not going to obey the law. See that as we study. As I built David, and will give Israel unto thee. Now that Israel is the northern tribe. The ten tribes. From now on. Israel's ten tribes, Judah is that one tribe, which is Benjamin and Simeon. And he follows it up, he sins, and he does not obey God, and it comes out to be a big mess. But if Jeroboam had done right, look at that same promises that God laid upon him by David. Solomon sought, therefore, to kill Rehoboam, a Jeroboam. We read over here, where was it, that he lifted up his hand against the king. It's almost like Jeroboam got a little maybe proud, a little, I'm going to get you, I'm going to take care of you, I'm going to get your kingdom. That's what it looks like. Can't say it was. After the insights of Ahijah, Solomon seeks to kill him, and it says that Jeroboam lifted up his hand against the king. The king is Solomon. So there's already some kind of rebellion. Solomon already has an adversary, Hadman, Hadad. He already has another ad adversary, Reason. These two men are recorded that they're going against Solomon. Here's the third one. This third one actually is going against the kingdom. He's rebelling against the king. And Solomon sought therefore to kill him. Kill Jeroboam. And Jeroboam rose and fled into Egypt. But everybody's going down to Egypt. Exactly what God told him not to do. Unto Shishak, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt unto the death of Solomon. So Solomon doesn't pursue him. And the rest of the acts of Solomon, and all that he did, and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of Acts of Solomon? Is that the Proverbs? Is that the Song of Solomon? Is that the book of Ecclesiastes? I have no idea. I don't know how many books that he wrote. But the Bible spoke, he spoke about trees, he spoke Proverbs. He, he, don't go looking for them. God has put, provided in the scriptures what he wanted, 66 books. We don't need to go find the missing books of Solomon. We already have the 66 books. If your Bible has anything other than 66 books, if it's got more than books, you need to throw that Bible in the garbage can and go get a Bible that has Genesis to Revelation, 66 books. Plain and simple. I wouldn't even have a Bible with this apocryphal. That's not approved by God. It's history, but it's not inspiration. And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was 40 years. And Solomon slept with his fathers. He was buried in the city of David, his father. And Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his stead. And boy, the troubles are going to be. But God appeared unto Solomon three times. 
he gets three adversaries. And the third one, the third time that God appeared to God, here comes the axe, brother. The third one shows up, and here comes the axe. I, I, taunting him. That Jeroboam has to leave. Now that Solomon's dead and Rehoboam, next chapter, Lord willing, he's going to step up and Jeroboam's going to show right up. The Bible's wonderful. 